Hi everybody, so in this video we're going to look at Leibniz's theorem, also known as the generalized product rule, or the nth derivative rule. It's a formula that helps find the nth derivative of a product of two functions. And this rule is particularly useful in calculus when dealing with functions that are products of other functions. So rather than giving you the rule, I'm going to show you where it comes from. If we're given that y equals uv, where u and v are both functions of x, we've been asked to find dy by dx, which we can do by applying the product rule to y equals uv. So we'll say dy by dx will equal to u multiplied by the derivative of v, so dv by dx, plus v times du by dx. So that's the first derivative. Now we need to find the second derivative. So now we've got d squared y over dx squared will equal, we'll differentiate this product. So we've got u d squared v over dx squared plus dv over dx multiplied by du by dx. And if we look at the second pair, we'll apply the product rule again. So now we've got plus v d squared u over dx squared plus dv by dx times du by dx. And can you see that we can simplify this by collecting this product pair with this one? So our second derivative, we can write as u times d squared v over dx squared plus two lots of dv by dx multiplied by du by dx plus v d squared u over dx squared. So this would be our simplified second derivative. Okay, so moving on to the third derivative, We'll begin by differentiating this product pair using the product rule. So we've got u d cubed v over dx cubed plus d squared v over dx squared multiplied by the derivative of u, so du by dx plus the two the derivative of this product pair becomes dv by dx multiplied by d squared u over dx squared plus du by dx multiplied by d squared v over dx squared. We'll close that bracket and then we'll differentiate our final product pair. So now we get plus v d cubed u over dx cubed plus dv dx multiplied by d squared u over dx squared. So then we can simplify this. We can collect this pair with these two and we can collect this pair with these two. So finally, our third derivative, d cubed y over dx cubed is u d cubed v over dx cubed plus 3 du by dx multiplied by d squared v over dx squared plus another 3 d squared u over dx squared times dv by dx plus the final term, this one here, v d cubed u over dx cubed, okay? So if we look at dy by dx, our coefficients are one and one. And if we look at d squared y over dx squared, our coefficients are one, two, and one. So one, two, and one. Then if we looked at our third derivative, our coefficients are 1, 3, 3 and 1. 
So can you see that we are creating Pascal's triangle? So if we were to think about our fourth derivative, we'll have 1, 4, 6, 4 and 1. And you can see there's a pattern in our powers as well. If we were to look at our second derivative, and with v terms, we've got d squared, d to the 1, d to the 0 v. And as we decrease with our powers of v, we're increasing with our powers of u. So d0 u, d1 u, and d2u. And the same thing works with our third derivative. 3, 2, 1, d0. Or du0, du to the 1, du squared, and d cubed u. So what this allows us to do is to generalise the rule as d to the n y over dx to the power of n will be the sum of starting at r equals 0 to the nth derivative. We can have n choice r. This comes from the coefficients here using Pascal's triangle multiplied by the rth derivative of u and then d to the n minus r derivative of v. And this is Leibniz's theorem. Okay, so in example 2, I'm going to show you how to use this to find the third derivative of a product. Okay, so in example 2, we've been given that y is the product of x to the 8 and e to the 2x. And we've been asked to find the third derivative. And we're going to use Leibniz's theorem here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find our derivatives up to the third derivative of each function. So if we say that u is x to the 8, the first derivative will be to pull the power down, so 8x and take away 1 from the power. The second derivative, 56x to the 6. And then the third derivative, 336x to the 5. And if we say that v is e to the 2x, well, the first derivative becomes 2e to the 2x, the second, 4e to the 2x, and the third, 8e to the 2x. And then, using Leibniz's theorem, we know the third derivative will be u times d cubed v over dx cubed plus 3 du over dx times d squared v over dx squared. So you can see now I'm adding 1 to the power for the u, and I'm taking 1 from the v power. So plus 3 d squared u over dx squared times dv by dx plus v d cubed u over dx cubed. And then all we need to do is to substitute each of these in to our formula. So we have u times the third derivative of v. So x to the 8 multiplied by 8e to the 2x plus 3. The first derivative of u and the second derivative of v. So 8x to the 7 multiplied by 4e to the 2x plus 3. The third derivative of u, the first derivative of v, plus v, e to the 2x, multiplied by the third derivative of u, so 336x to the 5. Now we can tidy this up by factorising out the x to the 5 term, the 8 term, and the e to the 2x. So we get 8x to the 5, e to the 2x, multiplied by x to the 3 plus 12x squared plus 42x plus 42. And this will be our third derivative of this function. Okay? So we're going to work through one more example. And in example 3, we're going to look at the fourth derivative of e to the x times sine x. 
Okay, so again, for question three, the first thing we're going to do is to find up to the fourth derivative of e to the x and sine x. So we know that all these derivatives, when u is e to the x, will be e to the x. And then if v is sine x, we differentiate this, we get cos x. To differentiate cos x, we get minus sine x. Differentiate minus sine, we get minus cos. And then we go back to sine x for our fourth derivative. And then using Leibniz's theorem, we know this will be u multiplied by the fourth derivative of v plus 4 du by dx multiplied by the third derivative of v plus 6 and the second derivative of u multiplied by the second derivative of v plus 4 times the third derivative of u and then dv by dx plus v d to the 4u over dx4. So now we can substitute these derivatives into our equation and we get u e to the x times sine x plus 4 e to the x minus cos x plus 6 e to the x minus sine x plus the 4 e to the x cos x plus e to the x sine x We can tidy this up by factoring out e to the x and then we get the sine x minus 4 cos x minus 6 sine x plus 4 cos x plus sine x. We'll close that bracket and then you can see this negative 4 cos x will cancel with this one. We can collect the sine x term together and then we get minus 4 e to the x sine x. And this will be our fourth derivative. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and worksheet from our website, mrmathematics.com. Thanks again and take care.